I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I'm going to answer a request I've had a couple times now in the comments about how to do an offset, specifically for sticker design for the Cricut machine. So I don't have a Cricut machine, but I can show you three simple ways to do an offset. We'll do a text-based offset. We'll do a PNG graphic offset. And because it's so easy, I wanted to make the tutorial a little bit more challenging. I'll make this geometric pattern and then we'll offset that. So if you want to just do that part, skip ahead, I'll timestamp it. But let's begin. If you're going to follow along and you're a beginner, you can go to the welcome screen when you open up Inkscape and choose the A4 template. That's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. I'm not gonna use this actual space, but that way if you're following along, your offset sizing will look the same. So we're gonna go over three easy methods. All of them will be doing a white offset, which will be hard to see against the white canvas. So let's go up to File, Document Properties. That'll bring up a sidebar, and we're gonna change the background of the canvas here. So down here under Background, you can change it to this checkerboard thing, which makes it kind of tricky to see what's happening. I'll click on the white right there, and you have a color wheel. And you can go to any background that you want, but we'll keep it simple. We'll stay conservative. I'm going to go to the RGBA code D-E-D-E-D-E-D-E. -E 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 -E. It's just a random gray, but I think it's easy on the eyes, and we'll see the white easily. Now for method three, don't mess around with this A here. This is transparency. The A stands for alpha. Method three, we have to have an alpha of zero to make it work. Otherwise, we'll come into some problems. Let's close this. All right, method one is a path function called linked offset. So here I have some actual text. It's live, I can type on it. And I have an alarm here. Let's see what this says. It's reminding us that to do path functions, you have to turn the thing into a path. So right now this is live text, it won't work. To fix that, I have it selected, go up to path, object to path. Now it's a path, but there's one more quirk. Click off of everything, double click till you have only one letter, then hold shift and get all the different pieces. Once they're all selected together, go back to path, combine. What we did right there is we took our original text that was in edit mode and now we made it into a mode where the path functions will work. So go back to path and down here you see linked offset. Click that. A little diamond shows up and that is going to be our handle to make the offset. So if I grab it right now it's going to be blue. So let's go ahead and go up to our fill and stroke menu. If you don't see that it's this paintbrush thing in the corner. Click on your fill color and we'll choose white for this example. And that is the fastest way you can get an offset. You can modify it on the fly and see what happens. You can make it really huge or nice and small. And if that's all you needed, you are good to go. You can save this, export it, and move. But method two gives you a little bit more control. For Cricut and for Sticker Giant, they want a specific offset. Sometimes it's an eighth of an inch. And you can eyeball this and you can measure it, but there's a better way. Method two takes advantage of an advancement that Inkscape made to the path function linked offset and now it's under path effects. So it starts off almost the same process. We'll take our warning. We have to take this live text and convert it first. So I'm going to click on it, go to path, object to path, then I'll double click until I have one letter, hold shift, get the rest of them, then path combine. Same as before. Now we can go to path, path effects. And you'll say nothing happened it's just over here it's a blank sidebar click on the plus down here and these are all different live path effects that inkscape gives us we want to go to offset yours may not be in this corner it's always kind of switching up the menu here go to offset click on that and over here on the bottom of the menu you'll see your controls the big improvement is you can actually enter the exact width of the offset that you want. And you can change the units from centimeters, millimeters, inches, pixels, whatever you need to get your project just the way you want it. There's also some different choices in how the offset will look. You can go rounded just like the previous one. You can miter it so it has a sharp edge. The only thing that they didn't include is the linked feature. So the previous one, it automatically made the second so your offset was built in right underneath your text but on this you have to duplicate it so let's choose our text Control d duplicate it and we'll come back to this once we have the offset the way we want it click on this one let's change it to white 
and go back to our path effects and you can just enter whatever you want. So I know an eighth of an inch is 0.125. So we'll go to inches, 0.125, enter. And there is your offset and you can bring this right back up. If you did like how the method one had the handle, you can do that too. Just go up to edit paths by node and you'll see your circle and you pull the circle to the offset that you feel like would be good for your project. And in real time, it changes your figures in this box right here. So I'll go back to 0.125 inches and let's clean it up now because if I just run with this, it's gonna be real difficult to get these. I don't even know if the Cricut was able to do the small cuts like that. So let's clean it up. Easiest way to do that is to click on your offset and go back to that edit paths by node that we saw and double click so you can see your nodes. If you have just this part right here, you can drag a node one at a time if you feel like it, or you can hold shift and grab around a couple nodes and drag them at once. Another way is to hold shift, grab a whole bunch of nodes and just push delete. If you have a part that's a little bit complicated, you can also grab multiple nodes at a time by clicking on one, holding shift and selecting some other ones. That lets you pull the whole unit together if you're trying to fill a bigger gap. Do we want the hole in the O? Let's see what it looks like. If there's any Cricut users watching, is this possible? Can the machine cut inside of the thing? Just to be safe, let's get rid of it. I'm gonna guess it can, but it's probably a pain if you actually print that out and then have to get a little X-Acto knife to remove a circle inside of an O. Before we move on, let me show you what I mean by the different types of styles of offsets you can do with the path effects function. So I have it selected. I have my offset actually chosen here under the join, it's set to miter, which is like a miter joint, nice and sharp. It can go back to rounded like we have before. Then there's one beveled, if you like that like collegiate text font. And there's some more advanced ones in there too. Let's go with the rounded, just because I think that's more common in what you see in the real world. All right, here we are at method three of how to do the offset. It's gonna be utilizing the paint bucket tool if you saw the Inkscape quick start guy that I did that video, I gave the paint bucket a hard time. It's very quirky, but this is an example where it shines. Let's say you're bringing in your company logo or this filet of fish sandwich, just don't ask. If you bring it in as a PNG image with a transparent background, you can't do the path effects that we just did. It just doesn't work, but you can do the paint bucket. And this is exactly why the paint bucket was made. It does have some quirks, so let's walk through that first. We got a warning here. The first says set the tool. The paint bucket can be frustrating because it's going to assume the last fill and stroke on whatever you use. So if you had a transparency or if you didn't have a stroke or there was no fill, you'll try something with the paint bucket and nothing will happen because it's trying to assume something that's either not there or blank. Pause right here for a quick editor's note. You can inside the Inkscape preferences set the tool, the paint bucket tool to its own fixed fill and stroke style. I'm just assuming that none of us have that set while we're doing this tutorial, but you can go back and make it a default of your choice so you don't have the confusion that comes up. To prevent that frustration, I'm gonna grab the rectangles tool and see what I have. I have a white fill with a turquoise stroke. I don't need the stroke, so I'll go to stroke, get rid of that. Now I know that my paint bucket is gonna spill out just white, an opaque white, which is what I want. For the settings, I'll click on my paint bucket. The default is gonna say visible colors. You wanna scroll down to alpha, threshold 15, gross shrink will come back to close gaps, none. What I'm gonna do is grab my paint bucket here and click on top of the filet of fish. And it makes a perfect fill almost, like a silhouette of your image. So this would be your logo or whatever raster that you brought in. It quickly produces what we're gonna make a offset. So I'll delete out of that. One more quirk that still exists on the paint bucket, the gross shrink, it's not working properly for inches. If I put in an eighth of an inch, 0.125, first of all, it just rounds it to 0.12 and it also doesn't grow the way you'd expect it to. But pixels works and you can deduce one eighth of an inch with the pixels. I'm just gonna guess and just say 40, which will make my paint bucket spill out that same silhouette, just with the 40 pixel beyond the edge of the PNG, like that. Grab this filet of fish, bring it to the top. I guess I had too many pixels, but that's fine for this example. I'll take my offset, I'll hold shift, grab my 
sandwich there, control G groups it. You can export that if you want to magnet a sticker if you're feeling hungry. Let's move on to our timestamp. So if you just came to this tutorial just to see how you make this hexagonal graphic here, we'll timestamp it right now. This is something I was working on just for fun because I thought it would be a good challenge to figure this one out. It's very simple. It's using create tiled clones. We're gonna modify the shift, scale, and rotate features. And after watching this, if you like the way it comes out and want me to do more of these, let me know because I think I'll be making them anyway. But if I'm the only person that finds them interesting, then we don't have to go through the exercise. But one of the reasons I'm sticking it in this tutorial is this is an example of a very complicated design with lots and lots of nodes, which you can still do those path effects on the first two methods, but it's gonna slow you down and might crash Inkscape. So I wanna show you the cheat in case you have a very complicated design. We'll start with the Create Stars and Polygons tool. I have it set to six. So I'll put my hexagon, it's set to white with no fill, that is fine. Let's do Control D to duplicate it and we'll set this aside because I'm gonna have this underneath the complicated part and we're gonna make the offset on this simple shape rather than the complicated one. So back to this one, we'll add the stroke. I'll get rid of the fill. And let's open up the Create Tiled Clones, one of my favorite things about Inkscape. Go under Clone, go to Create Tiled Clones. I have it all preset, so we're gonna get this graphic in one click just by pushing Create. But let me explain it first in case, in case you care. The way that Create Tiled Clones works is it's gonna take whatever you have selected and do what you tell it to based on these tabs. On the Symmetry tab, you wanna be on P1, that's simple translation, that just means the absolute basics. Click over to the Shift tab. This is where you tell it where you want the clones to go. I wanna keep repeating this hexagon over and over and over and over and over in the same space, just changing it so it's smaller each time. To make that work, on the Shift X, have zero for the row and negative 100 for the column. On the Shift Y, negative 100 for the row and then zero for the column. We don't wanna move either direction. We don't wanna stay stationary. Just in case your exponent is set to something else, have it on exponent one, one. Go over to Scale. This is where we're gonna tell it how much smaller do you wanna make your hexagon each time. Each clone is gonna get smaller by just 2%. So under scale X, negative two, scale Y, negative two, that's per row, and then scale X per column, negative two, negative two. Rotation is how much of an angle you wanna spin it each time. So I've got every row will go two degrees and every column two degrees. Down here, apply to tiled clones, rows, columns, only one row and 50 columns. You saw I just made one hexagon. With those parameters punched in, I'll push with one finger, create. <laughs> just like that's what Inkscape can do it's just math and I like the way that looks but let's do the offset on there and we'll go over what we just learned so back to path effects I will choose offset let's make it a rounded offset and we'll go 0.125 on inches enter there is your offset let's make that easier to see let's go with the full half inch all right, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that does help. If you have a Cricut machine or if you want to do offsets for some other projects, maybe you'll find that useful. If you want to see more of the Create Tiled Clones spinning designs, I think those are fun. And we'll have the butterfly of pixels send us on our way. We're all set and I am off.